Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones and we are going to look at chapter one entitled The Plan from the NAS CLA Landscape Contractors Guide to Business Law and Project Management. Now, it is a textbook that we are using in HOR 273, Hort. Uh, management and marketing and it is also one of the manuals that you will need to study prior to sitting for the North Carolina Landscape Contractors Licensing Board state examination. This is one of three manuals that you will need to study uh, for that state license. But this is a textbook that we use in HOR 273 and we're beginning the semester with chapter one, the plan. We're going to talk about being an entrepreneur. We're going to talk about the business uh, plan, the, the benefits of it, the elements of it, and the pitfalls of a business plan. Now, you might wonder why I'm not doing a PowerPoint slide, uh, because guys, sometimes I think it's better to, to hear audio. I think it's better to see me talking about it. That's why I'm giving you the option of, of viewing this lecture on YouTube or hearing it on a podcast. That way there's no slides that you have to worry about. And plus, these chapters are very short, and I would rather talk about my experiences as being a landscape business owner uh, and talking about the topics in the book than spending the time for you guys watching slides. Now, there are going to be instances where you see uh, videos with slides in them, stuff that I've written especially about social media. That's going to come up later uh, in the semester, but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on chapter one, the three pages, the three, the three small pages uh, in chapter one. So again, we're going to talk about being an entrepreneur very briefly, the benefits of a business plan, the elements of a business plan, and then the business plan pitfalls. And lab one for this semester is using the uh, supplemental forms link that's on the last page of this chapter, um, nasclaforms.org, and using the access code uh, NCL129354. Guys, you can log into that website. Now, you are going to have to type in that um, passcode twice. You're going to enter it like as your username, and then it's going to come back and say restricted area, not able to get in, but then you'll see password highlighted in the box. Then you will enter it again, and then you are allowed into the supplemental forms page. And that's going to be part of lab one uh, for, uh, for week one in HOR 273. So, again, guys, just being a landscape contractor, let's say you're already in business, you're, you're going to have tools. You're going to have shovels, you're going to have rakes, you're going to have skid steers, you're going to have lawnmowers, you're going to have all types of equipment. Think about the business plan as equipment to run your business. Now, you're going to hear me say a lot, work on your business and not in it. Now, when you get to that point in your career that you're working on your business instead of in it, that is going to be probably one of the happiest days of your life other than the day that you have children. And I always joke around with my colleagues, having a business is like raising a child. There are steps to a business. When they're first born, you're, you're nurturing it, you're feeding it, you're taking care of it. You take it every single where you go. You don't leave it at grandma's or grandpa's yet until it gets a little bit older. It's with the parents. Your business stays with you 24-7. As the business grows, just as a child, steps happen. You know, the business is able to take steps. You crawl, you take steps. Next thing you know, it's upright and it's walking. And there gets to be a point where you can actually leave your kids with grandparents overnight. There there's gets to be a point where you can probably leave your business for a little bit and actually start other ventures or take that vacation with, with, your, with your family. But at first, guys, you eat, sleep, and breathe it. That's why we get into this business. We nurture it, we grow it, and eventually, as the other textbook in this class, uh, the E-Myth for the Landscape Contractor from my good friend Tony Bass, talks about the only reason that you build a business is to one day sell it. Now, I, I agree with that, but I love what I do so much that I will probably never sell it. I will never retire. I will teach until they kick me out of here teaching, and I will also always run a landscape business um, outside uh, of the college. In fact, I run two businesses. I run a consulting business and then I actually run a full service landscape contracting business. And I love what I do, guys. I am up every morning at 5 a.m. and it is 12 o'clock before I even think about going to bed because the three things I love the most, teaching, working, and consulting. Back to chapter one though. Guys, your business plan is your tool, just like any piece of equipment to run your business. Now, there are success factors. Um, and top reason 
that businesses fail are poor sales, competitive weaknesses, high operating expenses, difficulty uh, collecting on invoices, inventory problems, too many fixed assets, and poor location and fraud. Now let's take a let's talk about these a little bit um, in, in, in a little more detail. So poor sales. Why are you not getting the sales? Are you too expensive? Are you not expensive enough? Guys, sometimes people can look at you and think, well, I mean, this, this guy or gal is way too cheap or you're way too high. You need to price things out. You need to see where you fit in with your customers. Guys, there's nothing wrong with calling a competitor. You know, that's the good thing about not having your house as your business. Hey, give me a quote on cutting the yard. Give me a quote on aeration and seeding. You know, they come by and give you a quote. They don't know that one of the top landscape presidents in the area lives there. You get that quote. Check it out. That's, that's doing a market analysis. What are some competitive weaknesses of you? Are you a one-woman show or a one-man show? Do you need to expand and hire more employees? What, what can that be? Do you have high operating expenses? So many times I see individuals buy that fifty or $60,000 truck right off the bat to start cutting grass. Guys, I would never buy a $60,000 truck to cut yards in. I'm going to look for, for secondhand vehicles, stuff that I can actually take and do vinyl wrap on it and actually logo. I'd rather spend the money on logoing up an older truck than $60,000 truck payments. Not to cut grass. I'm not the one driving my vehicles. I want my vehicles to look sharp and nice, but I don't want that overhead expense of, of having that $60,000 truck that I have an employee driving. If I'm going to spend $60,000, it's going to be for myself, a personal vehicle to drive in, not in my business. I'm going to keep as much of my um, operating expenses down. Are you able to work out of your house? Now, that can be a good thing because you can save money over renting out a commercial piece of property to run your business. So you got to look at all that. Difficulty collecting on invoices. Now, what I've seen and what I haven't experienced, guys, I have invoices that I need to send out that are three months old. I just haven't had the time to sit down and do it. Cash flow is good right now, but I haven't had a chance to go back and bill on some of the stuff that we've done three months ago. And I need to do that. That is my personal mistake. I am admitting it. Guys, we talk about role models in business, but we also talk about failure models. I am both. I want to be both for you guys. I will tell you everything that I've done right, and I will tell you everything that I've done wrong. And I guarantee you, you're going to learn just as much from the things that I've done wrong as the things that I've done right. Do, do as I say, not as I do when it comes to things like this. We all get too busy, we all get tied down, and we forget to, uh, to bill our customers. I've seen it so many times with my father hard for him to get out those invoices. And when you send out an invoice that's three months late, it's usually going to take the customer three months or longer to pay it. They think that you don't need the money right away. So I'm, I'm working on a system where you bill weekly, especially on routine maintenance services. Because I always think about this. If you go out to eat, you pay for your meal right then and there. When you go by and cut somebody's grass, you need to have it where you can bill them immediately. Give them just a 1% discount or something on, on having a credit card on file that as soon as you mow the yard, you can actually click a button in your accounting software that bills them for that. So that way you've got that cash flow coming in weekly. Inventory problems. Guys, when it comes time to buy fertilizer and seed, that can be that can be an issue. Or you're bidding on a large landscape installation, do you have the finances to go and purchase these materials up front? Too many fixed assets? Are you, are, you, are you buying more than you need? Do you really need that skid steer right now? Could you go and rent it for the jobs that you're doing once a month, once every two or three months? Think about that. We all get kind of greedy and we want to go and buy as much equipment as we can, but listen to your accountant. When he tells you to buy a piece of, accountant, a piece of equipment, that's when you can buy it. Poor location. Um, and it depends on how you're marketing. If you're a retail nursery, um, or a garden center, you need that visibility on the main road. But today, with social media and everything, you can probably run a landscape business out in the country, save money on property taxes, not have to worry about so much zoning, and use social media. So that's not, that's not a bad thing as of right now. But you still don't want your crews driving an hour into a major metropolitan area to cut grass. They need to be close to it. And then fraud. You know, is people stealing from you? 
uh, and, and just the nature. I don't want to get too much into that, but it can be an issue, um, um, you know, in landscape contracting, guys. So, and then to sum it up, poor planning and inadequate management are overriding factors in business failure. So, and again, we're moving on to talking about being an entrepreneur, understanding entrepreneurship. There's many definitions, as you guys know, about what an entrepreneur is. But for this text chapter or chapter one, we're going to use um, what an entrepreneur is. And it is a person engaged in strategic activities that involve the initiation and development of a new business created to build long-term value and steady cash flow streams. So you are starting a new business, no matter what it is. If it's in the horticulture industry, if it's in the construction industry, if it's you know running a bakery, if it's running a garden center, anything like that, guys. Anytime you start something new from the ground up, you are an entrepreneur. Now, I look at all these Instagram profiles and I see you know people that are 18, 19 year olds that are an entrepreneur, or I see some some other individuals in, I'm not going to talk about uh, the actual industry that, it, that they're in, but they're still working for someone. You're an entrepreneur, guys, when you start the business fresh. Not when you go to somewhere else and they help you build a business or whatever. You know, it, your, your business card needs to have your logo on it. If it has another chain, you know, or franchise on it and you're leasing office space from another company that's helping you set it up and you're paying them a percentage of your profits, guys, you know, I just don't see that as being the true entrepreneur. The true entrepreneur is somebody that starts it out on their own, risking it, working 24 hours a day or 20 hours a day, whatever it is to get it going. It's the individual with their brand, their logo, their business, their business model is the true entrepreneur. So I can talk days about other industry that, that, that gets people to work for them and sets them up as like their own little business. I don't agree with that. You know, start your own business, be the head honcho, be, be the person in charge uh, of your business makes you the entrepreneur. Now, risk takers, you are a risk taker when you start a business. You may borrow money, you may go belly up, you may lose your personal assets to pay for things. It is a big risk starting your own business, but the benefits outweigh the risk by a long shot, by a long shot. For one, the just the fun of it being a business owner. Guys, I, you know, I kind of tell people this, you, you know, when we grow up, you know, we hear from our parents and we hear from, you know, grandparents and, and people that, that, that we truly respect and stuff, you know, not to be cocky or arrogant or anything like that, but being a business owner and being able to market yourself, that is the one time it's okay to brag on yourself, to talk good about yourself. That is the one thing I love about. The best thing I love about being a business owner is marketing yourself, is being on social media, is being on the websites, having that business card. I get excited over getting a new business card. Just this weekend, I got Titan Graphics Works to to print me some some new t-shirts and hats. That guys to me is is more exciting than going on a vacation at the beach. I love doing things like that. So I'm just just happy doing what I do. And so um again, it, you you've got to take those risks. You, you've got to understand what the calculated risk is. You've got to sit down and put this stuff on paper about how much money you're borrowing, how much uh, income you're going to intake, and that's what the business plan is going to do. And we're going to go through that with the semester. And so next week, hopefully, after you know talking about this chapter and doing the lab uh, that we're going to do, you're actually going to choose a business that you're going to write a business plan for, whether it be a loan maintenance, uh, company, if it's a company that strictly does mowing, if it's a company that does strictly fertility apps, if it's a company that strict, you know, just does landscape design, you're going to choose that and we're going to write a business plan for that. And once you get familiar and, and, and okay with writing business plans, you can take that and go work for somebody else and help them do it, or you can start your own business. Now, 
I like having a business plan for each segment of a company that we that we run. So yes, we run a full service landscape contracting company. If I wanted to do fertility apps within that company and, and create a fertility loan application company within that, I would do a business plan for that, for just that particular part of it. If I wanted to do design and have strictly a design division, I'm going to write a business plan for that. I do this to put it on paper to see where I'm at and to be able to take it to the bank and see if they can borrow money. But as you, as you see, when your business gets older, you may not have to borrow as much money. You could actually borrow money from yourself to start another joint venture. Now, my brother and I are getting ready to start a business together, and we'll talk more about that uh, in these lectures. Um, but, uh, you know, we're able to do that. We're in our 40s now. We see a need for something. We're going to go after it. And that's, that's the coolest thing about it. Um, is, is being in this business, seeing what contractors need, seeing what homeowners need, and actually being able to, hey, step aside and, and form a, another LLC or, or C corporation, whichever we decide to do for that particular aspect of business. Now, rewards and challenges uh, of, your, of your business. Rewards, being your own boss. I mean, that's, that is the greatest feeling in the world, guys, other than being a father. That is probably my biggest reward in life. Uh, having flexibility of time, yes, yes. If you need to go to your kid's um, concert at middle school, you're able to do that during the day because you're going to pull those late hours anyway. So you, yes, you do have some time and flexibility of time to go and do things that way. Having more freedom and independence, yeah. Uh, but again, you're putting in the hours, so you deserve that. Uh, making your own decisions, yes. Um, if you're married and you have a spouse, you're going to have to get uh, permission from that because they're probably going to have to sign on the dotted line with you as well. And then receiving personal satisfaction uh, from completing a job. Yes. Now, as business owners, the biggest mistake that we make is thinking that our employees uh, are going to be excited about things um, that we get excited over, like completing that job. We might be, yes, we just completed a $100,000 landscape install on a commercial site down in Charlotte, and we're just gonna be tickled and thrilled with it. And our employees aren't gonna be jumping up and down like we are. We completed a task, we, we were the managers of this project, we put it all together and we made this place look amazing. Yes, and we're fools to think that our employees are going to get that excited as we do because guys running your own business people are always going to think you're rich they're not going to see the 5 a.m's they're not going to see the midnights they're not going to see boss man or boss lady up at one o'clock in the morning doing estimates or writing out a schedule for delivery of plant materials to a job they're not going to see that uh, they think everything just clicks they think it does and so they're not going to get excited uh, as we do when it is completed. Um, many frustrations and challenges of being an entrepreneur. Long working hours. You heard me talk about 5 a.m. to 12 a.m. It's true, guys. It's true. But if you truly love it and you love what you do, there's not a, there's, time flies. There's not enough hours in the day. I wish we had 36-hour days. I wish we had 10-day weeks. I wish we had you know, 75 weeks in a year. I don't have enough time to accomplish everything that I want to. And yes, that may sound a little crazy, that may sound a little ridiculous, but guys, I love what I do, and I wish I could do it 24 hours a day. I just need a few hours of sleep. Um, managing cash flow and payroll. Guys, I can't tell you the times. Um, I used to be a home builder. Uh, still love construction. I uh, love being a part of that. Uh, industry, but my true passion is the green industry. And being a landscape contractor, I also feel, guys, that we we probably need to be general contractors as well, um, just just on just on certain jobs. Uh, and so, there's nothing wrong with having that GC license backing up your your landscape firm. And I, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about that later on, but I just remember times setting up on Thursday night seeing that I got the draws 
on the construction loan so I can pay my subcontractors or pay my employees the next day. There are times that you kind of sweat bullets, but it's all worth it in the end, guys. Trust me. High potential for overwhelming responsibility? Yes, yes, but I love that. Finding and keeping qualified employees. Probably the hardest thing that you'll ever do as a business owner is, is finding them and then keeping them. Because some of your best employees, guys, they are going to leave you and start their own business. That's just the nature of it. The best employees always leave to start their own business. Unless they know the 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 pitfalls of this and they don't want the stress of working till midnight at night there 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 are there are very few that will stick it out with you because they love the green industry they just don't want the responsibility of being a business owner but most of the time you hire somebody that's your best employee they're probably going to leave you in a couple years and start their own thing now you've got to realize that as a business owner and just kind of plan for that hey you've got them for two good years you know get the best out of it teach them learn from them and hey guys be colleagues instead of competitors later on you know that that employee that leaves you to start their his or her own business they may be a valuable subcontractor to you down the road so always think in that terms paying taxes Whew. crazy crazy guys you know payroll taxes is the, the the thing that'll get you in trouble the most when you start having employees that you pay on a weekly basis unless they are a 1099 subcontractor if you're taking out taxes on them if you're taking out fica and social security weekly and paying them you've got to make those deposits every friday it's it's got to happen it's just one of those things so um, be prepared for that the stress of, of having to do that and, and knowing that that's, that's always due. Knowing and following government regulations. Well, you know, you're studying to be a landscape contractor, you're studying to be a business owner, you're learning what those are. So, but let's talk a little bit about the benefits of a business plan. Again, that is a roadmap and a laid out structure of how you're going to build your business or start your business. Um, you know, there's key functions. There's three key functions. It is a planning tool. It is the roadmap for the growth of your business. It is a loan or investor document. How are you going to make money? Why would they want to loan you money or give you money to start your business? You need to have that laid out for them and they will, if it is a good business plan, they're either going to say, yes, we, we trust in you. We know it's going to work or, hey, you need to work on some areas of this and then come and talk to us a little bit later. And then a benchmarking tool. You know, you've laid out these guidelines for yourself. You've started your business. You've got your capital to start your business. Well, you need to go back and look and see where you are. It is that benchmark. It is that starting point of where you need to be. So um, those are your benefits of the business plan. Elements of the business plan, your cover page, your executive summary, your company summary, your products and services, your market analysis, your market strategy, and your financial plan. Now, your cover page, that's pretty much your logo, a confidentiality statement. Uh, you know, it introduces who you are. You know, put your logo on it and what it's about. The next is your executive summary. Guys, it's placed at the front, but it is written last. It is a summary of your business plan. Then your company's uh, summary. It's your vision statement, your mission statement, your legal structure. Your legal structure is either whether you're an LLC, C corporation, S corporation, sole proprietor, partnership, and next week we're going to talk more about those uh, business entities. Um, it's going to be your management personnel, where you're located, your facilities. All that is going to be in your uh, company uh, summary. Your products and services. What is it that you do? Do you sell a product? Are you a nursery that's growing trees? Are you a greenhouse operation that's growing summer and fall annuals? And um, poinsettias in the, in the winter. Are you, are, is that what you're doing? Are you selling products or are you providing services? Are you a full management company that is providing landscape management services of mowing, pruning, fertilizing, snow removal services, all of that. Or are you a full service landscape contractor where you're doing design build services? You got to state that uh, in your products and services page. Your market analysis, your target market, the market trends, and then major competitors are identified under the market analysis. Now, guys, there's always, there's always room for growth in the green industry there's one thing that i have always thought about doing if you were a company that specialized in just pruning 
hand pruning. I'm talking about taking a good pair of hand pruners, not hedge clippers, but going in and actually correctively pruning, I think you'd have enormous success. Now, you may be a one-person show because a lot of our employees, that's just the one thing they, they did not like doing was hand pruning. But guys, that is an art. And that is a, a need in this area. Not only would you be working for residential homeowners, but you could be working for, for other commercial landscape companies. They need that expertise pruning. And if you did a social media campaign on correctively pruning the different types of shrubs and trees that are out there, the work is there. You would make enormous amount. Now, basically, it would be, you know, how much time do you have available to work uh, to do these types of pruning? But that is that is one niche in the green industry that I think somebody could really, really expand on. Um, marketing strategy: What is the uniqueness, uh, product or service, as well as your pricing, advertising, promotional strategy? All will be outlined in your marketing strategy. Now. As we're going to talk about in this class, social media is the way to go right now. Everybody's big on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, you know, Twitter uh, to some extent, but the social media platforms are, are the way to get your name out. What's going to happen next? What's the next big thing after social media? It is audio. It's doing podcasts, doing a weekly podcast for your company. Remember I was talking about correctively pruning? If you did a short video clips on how to do it, and then you did a weekly podcast, and each week would be a topic on how to prune crepe, crepe myrtles, for one, everybody right now, this time of year, January, is going back and butchering their crepe myrtles. They call it crepe murder. Does it hurt the tree or the shrub? Not necessarily, but aesthetically, it is just horrible for, for the plant. It creates all those knots and all those those stems that come out, those leaders. It's just a poor way to do business. But if you did a podcast talking about how to correctly prune the crepe myrtle, how to go in and thin it out, and then the next week you did one on how to correctively prune um, Japanese hollies instead of using the hedge clippers. Guys, it's where it's at. Right now is the social media campaign, but later on you need to have audio. People want to... to to go in and, and hear your expertise w once a week for 15 minutes, for 10 minutes, or an hour, depending on what the topic is. Totally up to you. But that's how you get your marketing done. Your financial plan. You may already have some financial statements. Uh, you might want to include a balance sheet and an income statement uh, as part of your business plan. So new and, new and existing business can put together financial projections as additional documentation. So, um, you know, guys, the banks want to see where the money's at. Now, you'll probably see me put up a little bit later on um, mowing. Guys, I think mowing is bread and butter for the landscape industry. You know, whether or not you're a full service landscape contractor, um, you know, that just does design build, if you still had a mowing division, guys, it's going to make you money. Monotonous work makes money. I know it's boring. I know it's you do the same thing day in and day out. But when it comes to having employees, having that mowing crew mow every single day is going to make you money. Having that pruning crew prune every day is going to make you money. Having that install crew install every day is going to make you money. Where you start losing money is when trucks and trailers have to get unloaded and reloaded every single day because there's not enough work in each segment of your business. And then you're having to switch employees back and forth to do things. So your mowing guys, guys, yes, when it gets winter time, they're not going to be cutting grass, especially here in, in the triad. Now, maybe down towards the coast, you may have to do a little mowing or whatever. Um, but, but usually the, the warm season grasses, you know, go dormant as well. But down in the South Carolina, maybe you're mowing a little bit longer uh, season. Um, you know, we, we figure our contracts on 32 to 36 mowings. And then you got to go into leaf removal and then you go into hopefully snow removal. So there's something that your maintenance crews can do every single week, but they need to do it consistently. Your landscape install guys don't need to go help you get up leaf removal because they're not going to be acclimated to that. They want to do install work. Your maintenance guys want to do maintenance work. So think on this. Think on this term. Monotonous work makes money. Have the same employees doing the same job every single day. 
and have the same truck and trailer doing the same job every day. You don't want to unload and reload every morning and every night when you come in. You want to have that trailer, that maintenance trailer set up with the mower and the weed eaters and the blowers on it. So all they got to do is get in the truck and go. Windshield time and time at the shop is time that you're paying for that you're not actually able to have billable hours. And so guys, um, next thing we're going to do, you know, there's some business template, uh, business plan templates that's listed in your book, allbusiness.com, um, bplans.com, inc.com, sba.gov, American Express, the Small Business Open Forum, and then there's the bizmove.com uh, examples of business plans. Now, um, there are some software packages that will help you, but guys, there's enough word templates and, and, and guidelines that you should be able to download and actually help you start creating your business plan. I, I don't recommend buying these big software packages when, when a lot of this stuff is available at no charge uh, on these websites. Um, some business plan pitfalls that you may encounter. Uh, make sure, guys, that your assumptions are realistic. You know, if you're going to say that you're going to grow your company from 10 yards that you're cutting this right now at this day and time and you say by the end of the year you're going to have 500 but you're only going to do it with an additional two employees you got to be realistic you got to show you know periodic growth for your business um, keep the language simple don't use technical terminology or jargon cover the risk as well as the opportunities and then analyze your uh, competition thoroughly um, and take a look at them see if they have a license see if they have their pesticide license if they're landscape contractors if they're irrigation contracts no matter what business it is make sure that they have a business make sure they have the the license that they need to do the job that is one thing that you can put in your marketing i am a north carolina licensed landscape contractor very few people can say that very few people can say that and you need to market that to the extreme um, and then final inspection, guys, being an entrepreneur, you know, you take the calculated risk and weigh all the factors making the business decisions. And then, you know, we talked a little bit about the benefits and the elements of the business plan. And last, we finish up with pitfalls. Now, take a look at the supplemental forms. This is part of lab one this week. Um, it's nasclaforms.org. Use the access code NCL129354. You've purchased your book. Uh, and to be honest with you guys, it may be a different code. I don't know, this is the code that's in my book. I've, I've got a couple of these books, I'll double check. But the access code there, you can go to that website again, you're gonna have to enter it twice, but then you're gonna be able to get to all those links. Once you get into that website, you'll see the different chapters uh, that the authors have put in there. In chapter one, the plan should already be highlighted. You scroll down to the bottom, you'll see uh, some, some links. Um, that first lab is going to take you to the Small Business uh, Administration's website, and you're going to look at um, a business plan by Andrew and Rebecca. Uh, and so that is your first lab, is to download and read those, and then upload one of them um, to Blackboard. So anyway, guys, uh, I know I kind of got off a little bit, but I love this topic. I love running my own business, and I want to, uh, to help you guys get started with that. So I will see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you.